man who's been changing the game in applied sports science in Australia and the world for years. The man who is the most passionate coach in the game. The man who is not scared to ask the hard questions to make the industry better. Welcome to the Hit Show. Welcome to Ask Woodford. And here is your host as always, Christian Woodford. What intro! G'day guys, welcome to Ask Woodford, episode 52. I'm your host as always, Christian Woodford. I want to thank sponsors as always, macironfitness.com.au, the best equipment in the game. We're talking bands, we're talking rollers, we're talking SMR balls. The best of the best. Also, Christian Woodford, Signature of Sports Range, out soon. It'll be here next week, right at the front. We have the we have carbohydrate, we have creatine in the range so far. The best of the best, used by athletes, third-party tested. I want to thank Raw Nutrition Australia as well for their support of Christian Woodford, Signature of Sports Range. And the guy behind the camera today, Bryce Dinger, as always. Bryce, let's get it going. Here we go. Question. Pleasure as always, Wood. Yep. Um, first question I got, mate, um, it's from Cody McNeese. Yep. I don't think that's how you pronounce his name or her name, sorry. Um, hey, Christian, I'm a big fan of your content you put out, especially for someone who is trying to better themselves as a coach and is new to the game. I was wondering what kind of main cues you use for Olympic lifts, such as clean, snatch, and jerk. Yep. Clean, what? Clean, snatch, and clean. And jerk. Once again, mate, enjoy your content and love the work. Take care. Okay. Um, so what cues do I use? Yeah. Okay. First things first. Things first. Understand, let's, let's dissociate between Olympic lifting is a sport within itself. It's a strength-based sport, right? So when we look at using Olympic lifts, Olympic lifting, we are not using it to lift the most amount of weight possible for one rep in the, in the clean, the clean and jerk, or the, or the, or the snatch, right? So the weight, Olympic lifting or weightlifting, as an actual sport, there's two lifts, clean and jerk and snatch. Now, we actually use derivatives of the Olympic lifts or, or we use variations at, at Woodford. And at, in terms of you look at um, Olympic lifting is heavily used in the collegiate system in America for gridiron players. It makes sense because they have to produce power against heavy external load. Now, the heavy external loads would be the opposition player. So when we look at Olympic lifts, we use Olympic lift to derive a stimulus of adaptation. Now, the stimulus, what we're looking for is... Ground-based power, triple extension. When I say triple extension, I'm looking at extension of the hip, knees, and ankles. And triple extension is needed when you sprint, jump, change direction, very important. Um, but also, it's going to develop what we call high-low power or strength speed. Now, high-low power is defined as the ability to produce power. And remember, power definition is force expressed rapidly or strength expressed rapidly. Um, high-low power is the ability to produce power against heavy external loads. And if you have to look at the research, the best way you can maximize um, peak power output for the Olympic lifts is actually lifting over 80%. I think it's over 80% of your 1RM. So you're lifting heavy weight quick. Because the thing is, you cannot do an Olympic lift slow. You can't. Because if you do an Olympic lift slow, it doesn't work. You can't. It's got to be explosive. You've got to be quick. That's why Olympic, a lot of people love using the Olympic lifts, especially for athletic performance. But here's the thing. You need to understand. It is a sport. Like CrossFit. Like... Um, uh, powerlifting, that's a strength sport. Now, for you, you're asking the question, what cues I'd use? First of all, you need to dissociate between the two. Understand that what is the reason why we're using it? We're using it to develop ground-based power, expressive hip extension. We're using it for stimulus, st to stimulate a adaptation. We're not using it to get better at Olympic lifting. So if we're looking at the cues, what we look for, well, I keep as simple as possible. If I was going to use Olympic lifting, which I don't anymore, but if I, you know, I used to, personally, I use loaded jumps. A lot easier to coach, can put a lot more intent, and the learning time is a lot shorter. Now, that's not to say you shouldn't learn how to coach it. I've learned how to coach it, but once again, I've got guys who come in for only short periods of time. Or if I did have a longer period of time with them and they wanted to learn, yeah, I would be able to teach them. But very rarely do you get that chance in the private sector. Um, so pretty much what I like to do is, is, is cue like a loaded jump, um, like a trap bar jump from the hang, where we initiate a stretch shortened cycle trap bar jump from the floor, which is concentric only. It might be a, squat, a static jump from pins, concentric only. It might be a squat jump with your initiate the stretch reflex again. So there's multiple ways you can vary it. Um, I just think it's easy because you can get the athlete to work on 
applying force to the ground, letting the hips fluid come through, and they don't have to worry about, like, let's look at a clean, let's do a hang clean or a power clean. With a clean, they've got to work out where to catch the bus. So they don't only get force production. I like the I like the Olympic lifts because you get force reduction as well. We're absorbing the we're absorbing the force. So that's the benefit of doing Olympic lifting. But the drawback is is especially doing a clean. It's very technical. Um, to you know to get it perfected. So if you're ever going to coach it personally, there's going to be some sort of progression up to it. Um, personally, and also second second of all, um, you got to understand is you have got to keep the cues simple and effective because. Remember the reason, you're always going to go back to the reason why you're doing it. What is the reason? You should be able to justify every, every part of your program using um, theoretical anecdotal reasons. Um, if you can't, why do you have it? And making someone, and, and using the statement, well, everyone else does it, it's not fucking good enough. So you've got to have a justification. There's going to be logical reasoning behind it. Um, so when we look at Olympic lifting, understand that, yes, yep, uh, yes, it's, you can use it, but understand the reason why you're using it. Because there's other things you've got to facilitate. You've got to, you, not only, you know, for, let's say in, in a lower body session, yeah, you might use Olympic lifting, but then also, you're not just going to do Olympic lifting that whole session unless you can do that, which most people can't. You want to hit your bilateral strength lifts, you might supplement your unilateral lower body, and something called maybe conditioning. You might only have, six, like me, I have 60 minutes to get in and get out. So you're not going to spend all session on. So, for the, for the cues that you want to ask, cues I'd say would be, um, first of all, when let, let's let's give you that. Let's say for the hang clean, right? Keep the bar close to your body. Oh, actually, you know what? Let's do, yeah, let's do the hang clean. Keep the bar close to your body. Like hinge back. When the bar, you know, when you hinge, you want to hinge quick. You want a quick pre-stretch. I want you to jump up with the bar. Now you want to coach them. You want to coach all Olympic lifts on a frontal plane on a side position. Why? Then you see the joint angles. So you want to jump up. You want to get full extension of the hip, knees, and ankles. So that's where you can actually see from the side angle where you're seeing they're getting triple extensions. They're jumping up. They're shrugging. You want to shrug up. It's a full body movement. You're shrugging up, and from there, where the bar's gonna to come to a high pull, you wanna quickly catch the bar. And this is where you do it, um, you might do like a, um, a like we, we, sometimes I coach, well, I would coach a, a, a clean catch where you start the bar in a hang position, work to get under the bar. Because what happens is, there comes a point where literally, the bar gets too heavy where you can't just muscle, you know, you, you can't, you, you can only pull it. A lot of people can pull the bar quite high because it's light. It gets to a point where the bar's getting too heavy where you can't pull it so high where you're going to work on getting under the bar and catching the bar in that front rack. So jump up, make sure you get that triple extension. That's where you use it, ground base power, triple extension, and make sure you get under the bar so your front racket, where you can catch it. Because what I like about the Olympic lifts, I've said this before, you get the force production and you get the force reduction. Um, keep the cues simple, keep them effective, and get the athlete to move with intent and good quality in the bar. That was a good question, and uh, I wanted to explain the whole thing because it's very important to understand Olympic lifting, Olympic lifting isn't the be all and end all. It's not the, a magic bullet that everyone thinks it is. It is just another tool in your toolbox. Am I, am I saying that you shouldn't do it? No, but understand understand this other ways you can develop high load power good good great question as well yeah that was a good question um next one's from locky for wallace um christian i'm a dedicated soccer player that wants to increase aerobic and anaerobic fitness but also want to gain weight as i am weak how would you go about training and achieve both of these you got a real good name mate this <laughs> Not really, no. This is, this is actually a good question. Um, relates a bit to me as well, because I remember when I first came here, I was, I was a bit weak and, and didn't weigh yeah. too much. Yeah. And I wanted to be able to still... So, wait, so well, explain... But... I just listened to the first part of his name and did my head in. Jay, Jay, if Jay's watching, he's got a good laugh, but there's a reason behind it. Tell me, this, tell me this, the question again. So it's pretty much his name's um, Lockie. Um, and he's a dedicated... I, I know his name. I remember that name. I'll never forget that <laughs> name. Don't worry. <laughs> um, he's a dedicated soccer player that wants to inc increase aerobic and anaerobic yeah. fitness. Yep. But, but he also wants to put weight on because he's weak. So yep. how would, how would, what's the best way for him to go about this? Well, that's a good question. Um, Lock, Lockie, I want you to remember this. Strength facilitates endurance. Endurance doesn't facilitate strength. I've told you this before, right? So I want you to understand you can't attack everything at once. So you need a plan and structure behind this. You can't just go, I want to prove anaerobic. I want to improve anaerobic capacity, aerobic capacity. Well, they don't really, they don't match. Strength, power, speed, they can match. Aerobic, aerobic conditioning, that doesn't match with this. So, first of all, it, you need to structure in such a systematic and structured way where it's not, you, like, it's called concurrent training. Train two different bimotor qualities completely, aerobic and anaerobic. Metabol a, 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 like, anaerobic qualities are stuff like power, speed, strength. Aerobic qualities is like anything low intensity, right? So, it's like, Trying to do everything at once, it doesn't work that way. And that's where you've got concurrent track. It's a football. You say, oh, you're a football, right? 
Mm. How many guys of massive in round one? Because, you know, they've, they've done full pre-season, off-season lifted. They quite come the end of the season, they've shrunk. Now, some, some of them are smart. They maintain it. A lot of people don't. You do because you're actually on the steel here. A lot of them don't maintain it. You've seen it. They just shrink. Do you know why? It's because football and soccer have such an endurance component. Right? So for this, for the answer, I'd say number one is go seek out a highly educated and applied coach. Um, I, I know someone um, uh, that might could help you. Um, WoodfordSSC.com. Um, but you, pro- you need someone to structure it because here's the thing, right? You can't train everything at once. I think that's what people do. They get so um, You did it at the start as well. You kind of overthink it. And then it's like, well, understand this. The most important thing is, first of all, my thing is strength. And I've told you this before. Strength is a foundation. Once you have strength, then you can build your house. Without a basic level of strength, everything's going to be harder. Now, am I saying that it's the bell and end or no? But a little bit of the strength... For a soccer player especially, is a game, for any athlete really, it's a game changer. So we talk about you want to put on weight or you don't want to minimize your weight, you want to prove aerobic and anaerobic. Understand this, strength is probably the first thing. Just getting strong with your bilateral lifts and your supplementary unilateral lifts. So I'm talking about squatting and deadlifting, choosing a variant. Make sure you get it periodized and properly structured in terms of, your, um, 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 in terms of volume and intensity. Um, so make sure you understand that, yep. And um, I also as well, um, make sure that your, your diet, so we talk about um, you don't want to lose too much weight. Um, this is where supplementation comes into it. So what are you putting in, in terms of what are you eating? Like, do you have a diet that has all three macronutrients, carbohydrates, fats, proteins, but also what are your supplement, su- supplements? And this we talk about when my um, new supplement range comes out. This is a good segue into this. My supplement range is everything. That, the reason why I did it, number one, A, is I want to promote good um, supplement. And by the way, just to let everyone know, a supplement is the actual said should supplement the diet. I've never ever said supplements should never ever take your main, uh, should be your main source of nutrition. No, no, no. Supplements are really good because they supplement the diet for people who are time poor, like me. So example, you've got a shake. What's the benefit of, um, of a shake? What's well, rapidly absorbed into the bloodstream? That's why. All my, all the supplements I'm going to endorse, the creatine, the carbohydrate, the protein, that's all stuff that's fantastic. We, you can have a, car, like a perfect example for Lockie, you don't want to lose weight. Well, I'll be having straight after training, a protein, a carbohydrate shake. What's the importance of carbohydrate and protein? Well, we know a carbohydrate and a protein together is going to increase glycogen resynthesis. So carbohydrate resynthesis, it's going to spike insulin, which regulates about glucose. And then from there, we're going to start kickstarting glycogen replenishment. We eat, gl- we eat carbohydrate, carbohydrate stored as, um, is released as, um, or carbohydrate, very named glucose in the bloodstream, stored as glycogen in the muscle and liver, right? Now, it's important that's going to kickstart your metabolism from catabolic breaking down to anabolism building up. Then we know from the protein and the carbohydrate together is going to stimulate protein synthesis, i.t. muscle, muscular recovery. So it's going to help the recovery, minimal. And then from there, you're not going to get the issues with losing too much weight. Now, am I going to say you're not going to lose weight if you're doing so much, uh, uh, the amount of aerobic running you might be doing? No, of course not. But you can minimize it by the carbohydrate and the protein you take. Um, and that, the three factors straight after training in terms of what we want to do in terms of nutritional and hydration needs, increase glycogen replenishment, increase protein resynthesis, minimize muscle protein breakdown. That's the big thing we want. Three, three focuses after training. Um, but in terms of your question, don't, don't be focused on, on trying to do everything at once. Have a plan of attack. Seek out the appropriate and applied strength and conditioning coach. But that, that question, like, I can't really... Once again, guys, when you ask a question, it can't be, like, specific to you because then it's going to be kind of general. Like, that's a general question, but then almost too general. Like, you, you're almost trying to do too much. Keep, don't, don't worry about... Um, you're kind of trying to just... It's got to be planned, got to be structured, all right? The minute you got that, then you can move forward. Next question. Good question as well. Helps me a fair bit as well. Well, you try to do everything at once, didn't you? Really? You try to do everything at once and then... I, yeah. Broke myself. Correct. Um, next one, mate, is from I am Coach Nick. Um, he says, love that recent post about kilometres in legs. Um, I think this was a few weeks ago. You might have received this question. Um, what would you suggest for rugby conditioning pre-season for under 20-year-olds? The old thinking is pyramid-based, long, slow, 10-kilometre 10, 10 hour, um, per hour runs, then power and then speed progression. So what, what, what was he asking? He was asking... Um, what would you suggest for rugby conditioning um, pre-season for under 20-year-olds? 20, 20 okay. 
The usual, you know, I think you brought up commons in leagues. Let me quickly talk about that. Yeah. I do not know where this came from. Like, you know, have you ever, you played football a lot, like me your whole life. Well, you, well, I played up till 24 until I had to start this. Um, but, um, oh, hello, Dad. So, hello, mate. Hello, mate. I, G Woods right here. G Woods. So yeah, um, we we just had a good. I uh, just had a good uh, talk to. Actually, well, this was a quick. I go to a segment about business. Actually, talk about business. I'll quickly just say this. Let me say this right. You can leave this in by the way as well because it's important. But business is um. Yeah, it is it's something that um I don't think I'll ever understand. I don't think I've ever understood business. I don't think I ever will. You know, when people always say, you know, I've told you this, Bryce. It's not. It's not business. Any business isn't easy. And even I think that um uh, the lesson I've learned about business is is you have to um, be patient. You have to got to chip away at things. It's not going to happen overnight. There's no such thing as overnight success in business or in life. And I think that's a good lesson for everyone watching this is I personally, I started Woodford and I never, I've never made, a, I never knew what losing was because I made a profit day one. The minute I started struggling was the, when I, my business, you know, you, if most people think that when you start a business and when it starts to boom and you start adding staff, it's a good thing. I, man, I wasn't ready for it. I didn't even know what, what I was doing. So I think the one one thing that I, I people when young people come in and ask me, oh, you know, what's the what do you think about opening a gym? My thing is, you probably don't want to do it. I think the best thing is always probably if you can, is subleasing a space, like a small space, sublease a small space. That's my opinion. Um, I can't do that now because it's never going to work, and um, people will just either use my name for their own benefit or they'll put a price up where there's no point anyway. I'm just going to get my own place. So that's what happened at my first joint is he found out what was how much money I was making. People use that because they don't want to work themselves, and people want to leverage off the – making a brand in this – in any industry is hard. Making a, a well-known brand in the Australian fitness industry is very, very hard, especially what I'm trying to do, very hard. But – we're still here. Most businesses fail in the first... I don't know what the rate is. I think in the first year, it's 97%. Mm. Yeah, m- many fail. But we're still here. We're still fighting every day. And I believe that we can, we can always... You know, you can always... You know, for me, I've learned so much more of a lesson in seven years start uh, doing this business than I had my whole life. So if, you, if, you, if, you, you know, if you're wanting to start a business, my best advice is start getting the right team around you, but also start reading up on other books other than training. Like, learn more about... Um, communication, like staff management, that's a big one, staff management. Start learning about how to manage people better. Not everyone's going to respond to you yelling and screaming like I, like for I thought. Not everyone's like you, everyone's different. You might you might have this person that's good at that, that person's good at this. Why so start, like, everyone's got their strengths and weaknesses where I kind of thought that if they're not like me, what's the point? You know, piss them off. But, I mean, I learned my lesson from that. This has been a life journey and I, I'm still, we're still going. Um, thank God I love the coaching because I don't, I don't, I didn't get in this for the business, you know? I didn't do this for the business. I did this because I actually love, this is why most people don't do it. Like people go, oh, you know, like I, I'm coaching. I just want to become a coach. Well, that's great, but there's a business side to it. If you don't have a back end, never going to work. Make sure you've got a good, strong back end. Make sure um, you've got people who, who really care about you because when things go bad, they're the only ones there. And regardless, how many times I've yelled at dad, like I just slammed the door on him before. I don't know, I just got frustrated because... I get frustrated because business can be frustrating, but the coaching side I love so much. But without without dad, I probably wouldn't we wouldn't be in this position. He he he, he, he stood by he stood by me. So, and there goes his phone. And I bet, is that mum? It's not mum for once. Normally it's mum. So I don't know. I just thought I'd say that when he walked in. So thanks, dad. I appreciate it. I'm sorry I ran off on you. You don't want to come on camera? No. No, I don't want to come on camera. How do you find these? Do you like these series? You like the like the intro? He doesn't like the American accent, oh, but we really hit the American market. I put a lot of work into that. Now, yeah, I'm <laughs> Paul Brighty. Now, go back to the question. So this is, this is the rugby kid, correct? So I don't know where this came from, but the commons and legs thing is the most stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. Where is it? Like, for everyone out there to understand, making someone tight isn't... This is a good snippet. This is the snippet you're going to use for Instagram, by the way. Making someone tight doesn't take, it doesn't take any knowledge. Any idiot can make another idiot tired. To make someone better... At their sport or better for their goals. It takes structure, it takes understanding, it takes periodization, having a plan, sticking to the plan, and then understanding the underpinning science behind it. So I think the commons in legs thing, like at football, AFL, you go to America. Right, kids your age have been lifting properly since year nine. Fucking hell, did you know what lifting was in year nine, Bryce? Because I I mean I didn't we had a gym at McKinnon was like that probably, you know what I mean? Like strength training is bastardized because most people think strength, Bryce, and they think they conjure up images of a massive bodybuilder on steroids. So they think that, they, they, they look at and they, people think strength training. What's the first thing you think of when I say strength training? Come on. 
Big boys. Thank you. You think big boys. You think mu- muscular, right? Yeah. You, you, you think mechanical manifestations. You know what I think? Neurological. I just honestly think strength patterns because that's what I've been taught to think, right? A parent down the street doesn't know the difference. They're going to think strength training is going to make you muscle bound and bulky. Man, fuck. There's a, still the fucking uh, fallacy that strength training makes you slow. In what world strength, strength training will, will stimulate your fast twitch fibers, will activate your fast twitch fibers, your fast twitch motor units? Yes, it can make you slow if you train a certain way. Like if you train high volume, some maximal loads for your whole lot, for, for 10 years, yes, you're going to be slow because your nervous system will adapt to that stress. But for fuck's sake, if you get someone who knows what they're doing, like a, a qualified strength and conditioning coach, someone who, say, undergrad degree in exercise science, honors in neuroscience, say someone down here at Woodford Sports Science Consulting, not only will strength training make you bigger, it's going to make you stronger, faster, more powerful, and more efficient. And that's what we want as athletes, make more efficient. So the climbers in the legs thing, never understood. I can't understand it because we have this obsession in Australia to make someone tired, and it's almost like, hey, if you're not tired after your session, you're not, gonna, you know, you're not getting better. I'm going to fatigue you, fog you, fog you. It doesn't work that way. And these days, you, we have to have a different approach because the kids, it's not working. Think about how many kids are getting injured. Think about how many footballers are having ACLs, female footballers, male footballers, have chronic injuries at the age of 16. I mean, Bryce, did you have any injuries when you were younger? You were, football? You were, you were a talented footballer. Well, you, uh, still are, you still are a talented yeah. footballer. You just can't get a, get a go yet. No, you know what I mean? I've never, I don't think I've ever had an injury until my ankle um, last year. So. Hey, well, hey, been good, but we see it all the time at Woodford. Young kids come through, two ACLs, three ACLs by the time I'm 18. How does that, like, how does that happen? Like, Dean, Dean's two ACLs, three ACLs by the time I'm 20. It should, these non-contact soft tissue injuries can be prevented. Prevented how? Proper strength and conditioning. The, you talk about injury prevention. The best way to prevent injuries is a properly designed strength and conditioning program. Like rehab, mid to end stage rehab, the best rehab program is a properly designed strength and conditioning program that the individ, that's specific to the individual, yep, and that is progressed based on their competency. And I just don't, I can't understand, especially when they're young up, their nervous system is quite adaptable. It's not putty. Alan Pierce told me said to stop saying it's putty, who's my honor supervisor, who's actually a leading researcher in concussion. Um, he said, don't use cut putty. He said to use the word, um, like, uh, Dad, what's that word? Like, um, for, um, you're, you've got a computer and you're re- rewiring, the, you're rewiring the brain, right? Reboot, yeah, rebooting. It's not, you're re- rewiring, right? When you're younger, I want to think, the junior athlete, you, 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 it's more perceptive. Their computer, their computer is more perceptive. You're rewiring their heart, rewiring it to move more effectively. You've got a period when the nervous system, the nervous system is fully, not foot, fully mature. I usually think 24 is now 30. So in other words, you can always develop. This is why people lift weights up till they're older and they're still developing that neurological change. They're still learning new skills. You can always learn new skills, but it's a lot harder as you get older. Fully mature nervous system is at 30. When they're younger, the, the, the neuromuscular system is quite adapted to change. They're hardwired, quite adapted to change, right? This is where you want to develop more neuromuscular jumping, landing, sprinting, change direction. These anaerobic, these anaerobic, when I say anaerobic, without oxygen skills, you want to learn them. So we talk about the rugby definition. These stu- running them into the ground is not going to help. Okay, the best way you're going to get your conditioning is how what I believe is everything with the ball. If you have to supplement it, supplement, supplement with that's fine. Supplement if you have to. But the main source you should get your conditioning is through your small sided games, your match simulation, your competition. That's where you're going to get your specific muscle group, motor pattern, time and coordination, metabolic pathway. That's when I believe that integration approach, two birds, one stone, physical and technical and tactile is beautiful. And the people who say that the running, if a coach says kilometers in the legs, it is fucking stupid. Anyone can run. But the thing is, I can make you tired. I can just make you run. T- f- anyone can say just run. But... Football, rugby, football, it's not about that. It's a stop-start, high-intensity, intermittent sport. You need to sprint, decide, change direction. This is why you need to develop all different qualities. So what about your speed? What about your acceleration, your top-end speed? What about teaching an athlete to accelerate, decelerate, change direction? Because that, that eccentric absorption is critical. The best athletes can absorb, then rapidly accelerate in the, the direction they want. What about, what about repeat effort? So if you're just running, you're developing your aerobic system, great. But what about the repeat effort? What about the change direction? There's so many things that go on my mind that just running, that's not going to best prepare them. The job of strength and conditioning coach is to prepare the athlete for the worst case scenario, if you, if physically, in terms of capacities. Now, if you can do that, the chance of injury, I'm not saying it's going to, I'm not going to say they're definitely not going to get injured, but it decreases the chance of them getting injured. My role is to, first of all, reduce chance of injury, and second of all, is to increase athlete performance. My best, the best thing to do if you're a rugby player and you're in your 20s is 
conditioning with the balls as much as possible. If you need a top up and you feel like you need to, um, let's say you're doing an uh, aerobic endurance test, like a yo-yo, yo-yo is more specific, or uh, a yo-yo or a beat test, and you feel like you're not, your conditioning is up to par, that's okay, you can do some top-up work. But I think Australian athletes in general are too focused on becoming an aerobic beast when, when they can focus on neuromuscular quality, strength, power, speed, and that's going to facilitate the aerobic endurance. Remember, when in sport, in sport, winning is done fast. Why train them slow when winning is done fast? I'm not saying you shouldn't have aerobic base. Aerobic base is very important to develop, but there's other ways that you can develop aerobic base instead of running for prolonged periods of time. Okay, you don't need to do that, okay? You can do interval stuff, you can work, yep, you can do interval stuff, you don't have to do that specific, just running like an endurance runner. Because yes, you need a base of, of, a, a level of aerobic conditioning, but the base level of aerobic conditioning will be dictated by the sport and the position. You, for me, everyone needs an aerobic base. Even a powerlifter who's a strength sport athlete, who's a pure anaerobic beast athlete, who produces force over prolonged periods of time. Even they need it. But to the extent which they need it will be dictated by the sport. But every athlete, every individual, Needs an aerobic based fitness just for work capacity, recoverability, stuff like that. Yes, you need it, but you don't need to overdo it because the minute you overdo it, then you're going to compromise the most important, other important aspects of your sport. So yes, you need an aerobic base, but the extent would be dependent by the sport. If you're just focusing on developing aerobic respiration, aerobic capacity, it's going to negatively affect other performance indicators, KPIs that's so important for athletic performance, but also reducing chance of injury which is so important. So just remember, stop, and I say this to my young football kids, stop worrying about endurance. You've got a massive endurance base. You can retain that endurance base now through just competition and just training. Now focus on other coins that's going to maximise your performance. Just get an aerobic base that's good enough for your sport. Like strength, get a strength level that's good enough for your sport, then focus on all more important KPIs, power, speed, velocity, specific areas. Force to produce rapidly, no prolonged periods of time in sport. They're the best athletes. They're the athletes you want, the most efficient athletes, how they move, how they change direction, all right? They're the best ones, right? That's what we're after. Hope that answers your question. That's a long way to wave answers your question. I've been on fire today. Three questions, really short, sharp. I loved it. Now, guys, want to sponsor? I want to thank our sponsors, MacIfitness.com.au. Type in the code WSSC, WSSC for 10% off. We'll be selling these at Woodford very soon if Jeff can get, uh, G could get it going with this and Kieran. Selling these at Woodford if you want to come pick them up. Also, the Christian Woodford Sport, uh, Christian Woodford um, signature sports range. We'll be selling it right here. If you're a gym that want to stock it or you're a performance center or you're um, a supplement store that you want to stock it, um, email uh, Kieran. She'll be dealing with all the accounts. Kieran at woodfordssc.com or DM Kieran Melissa. I should put up in my bio, check uh, at my um, Instagram. Check that out. If you have any questions, uh, send them through to Coach Woodford or Woodford SSC and Bryce. You will get them straight away. Thanks, guys, for watching episode 52. Guys, I've got um, a big, big, big guest on Ask Woodford. I'm not going to announce it yet, but get ready for this. This is huge. He's the biggest name in strength and conditioning in the world, and he'll be on Ask Woodford. I'm not sure when. I'll let Bryce know, but I'm not sure when. He won't be in store. But we, um, I'll be doing it over Skype, so get ready for that. I'm very excited. That was episode 52 of Ask Woodford. Thanks, as always, to the sponsors, Matt Guyon, Christian Woodford's signature series, and, as always, new producer, Bryce Digger. Thank you very much. The, hey, the respect we got, the, the production is getting better, so next week we should see... A wood for load on the back, some ferns. I don't know. Bryce will do it. Jeez. Right, well, a bit of pressure there, mate. Have we got any ferns? Are we new ferns or something? Oh, shit. Um, guys, um, also, Woodford 2.0 is up and running. You guys know that, guys. Memberships, one-on-one coaching, so private. Get, get amongst the info at woodfordssc.com or damn the page. Thanks, as always, for watching. I'll see you next week on episode 53 of Ask Woodford.